So the Buddha's twin miracle. In order to understand how fast the Master Buddha entered into these jhanas, we need to know the sequence of thought processes for abhinya. Abhinya is the one that is responsible for uh, producing fire, water, and others. Now first, abhinya is a variety of fifth jhana. Now there are five rupa vajra jhanas taught in the manual. And abhinya is a variety of, or a specialty of the fifth jhana. So after getting all nine jhanas, a person has to be very familiar with all these jhanas, entering into them and getting out of them in any uh, order, in the queue order, in opposite order, at random and so on. And so only after he becomes very familiar with the jhanas does the abhinya arises in him. Now in order to reach the abhinya stage, a person has to go through, say, six kinds of thought processes. You see the, the ones in, at the bottom. So the first one is Pataka Jhana Viti. So first, he must enter into the basis jhana thought process. And that basis jhana is here, fifth jhana process. Because the, the fifth jhana is the basis for Abhinya, which is again the fifth jhana. So after getting into this basic jhana process, he gets out of this basic jhana process. And next, he reviewed the components of the basic jhana. So that is reflecting process. This reflecting process is uh, not jhana process, it is karma vajra process. Next, he uh, gets into what is called a dhikthana or resolution. So, he makes a resolution in his mind, let the water come out of my body, let the fire come out of my body, and so on. So that is also the kama vajra thought process. After that kama vajra thought process, he enters into the basis jhana again. And that basis jhana here is fifth jhana. And then getting out of that basis jhana, there comes reflecting of the components in that jhana. Only after going through these five does a binya process arises. And when a binya process arises, fire comes out of his body. And then he has to go through all these the thought processes to produce water out of his body. And then again to produce fire, he has to go through these thought processes and then for water. So in this way, Buddha had to go through these thought processes alternately again and again. So in this sequence, number two and number five, uh, reflecting processes. So during these reflecting processes, the javanas will run only four times, not seven or six uh, as normal. For the Buddha, at the Twin Miracle, it is said that only four reviewing consciousness or reviewing uh, javanas arise in these thought processes. And we will read the section 22. The sublime jhanas for a beginner during the first cognitive process of absorption and the direct knowledge, that means abhinya, jhanas always, run only once. Sublime jhanas means rupa vajra jhanas and arupa vajra jhanas. Rupa vajra jhanas, these five and these five. And arupa vajra jhanas, is four and is four.
So the Buddha's twin miracle. In order to understand how fast Mas Buddha entered into these jhanas, we need to know the sequence of thought processes for abhinya. Abhinya is the one that is responsible for producing fire, water, and others. Now first, abhinya is a variety of fifth jhana. Now there are five rupa vajra jhanas taught in the manual. And abhinya is a variety of, or a specialty of the fifth jhana. So after getting all nine jhanas, a person has to be very familiar with all these jhanas, entering into them and getting out of them in any uh, order, in the Q order, in opposite order, at random and so on. And so only after he becomes very familiar with the jhanas does the abhinya arises in him. Now in order to reach the abhinya stage, a person has to go through, say, six kinds of thought processes. You see the, the ones in, at the bottom. So the first one is Pataka Jhana Viti. So first, he must enter into the basis jhana thought process. And that basis jhana is here, fifth jhana process. Because the, the fifth jhana is the basis for Abhinya, which is again the fifth jhana. So after getting into this basic jhana process, he gets out of this basic jhana process. And next, he reviewed the components of the basic jhana. So that is reflecting process. This reflecting process is uh, not jhana process, it is karma vajra process. Next, he uh, gets into what is called a dictana or resolution. So he makes a resolution in his mind, let the water come out of my body, let the fire come out of my body, and so on. So that is also the Kama Vajra thought process. After that Kama Vajra thought process, he enters into the basis jhana again. And that basis jhana here is fifth jhana. And then getting out of that basis jhana, there comes reflecting of the components in that jhana. Only after going through these five does a binya process arises. And when a binya process arises, fire comes out of his body. And then he has to go through all these the thought processes to produce water out of his body. And then again to produce fire, he has to go through these thought processes and then for water. So in this way, Buddha had to go through these thought processes alternately again and again. So in this sequence, number two and number five, uh, reflecting processes. So during these reflecting processes, the javanas will run only four times, not seven or six uh, as normal. For the Buddha, at the Twin Miracle, it is said that only four reviewing consciousness or reviewing uh, javanas arise in these thought processes. And we will read the section 22. The sublime javanas for a beginner during the first cognitive process of absorption and the direct knowledge, that means abhinya, javanas always, run only once. Sublime javanas means rupa vajra javanas and arupa vajra javanas. Rupa vajra javanas, these five and these five. And arupa vajra javanas, these four and these four. 
And for a beginner means at the first attainment. If you have not attained any of the jhanas, and then you practice uh, samadha meditation and you get the jhana, then you are a beginner for that jhana. Later, you may enter into that jhana again, but for that jhana, you are no longer a beginner. You have access to that jhana as you like. And then you practice for the attainment of second jhana. So when you first get the second jhana, you are a beginner of that second jhana. And then you may enter into attainment thought processes. Then you try to get that jhana. And then you get that jhana, then at the first attainment you are a beginner for that third jhana. And then you go on to attainment processes and so on. So at the first attainment, the Rupa Vajra jhanas and Arupa Vajra jhanas arise only one time. After that, the, the Bhavanga f- uh, follows. And also the direct knowledge, Abhinya, Javanas, run only once. Now, it's amazing. Now, uh, the Buddha entered into the Abhinya in order to produce fire and water. And although the preparation has to go through, say, six kinds of thought processes, in the Abhinya thought process, that Abhinya or fifth jhana jeta arises only once. So just by arising only once is so powerful that it can produce fire, it can produce water out of the body. The arising of four path endures for only one mind moment. That means maga, maga jhana arises only once. And yesterday we went through the Maga thought process. So in that Maga thought process, Maga arises only once, followed by two or three Pala moments. So, thought about the Maga, Sagadagami Maga, Anagami Maga, and Arahata Maga all arise only once. Thereafter, two or three occasions of fruition consciousness arise. According to the case, that means according to whether a person is of keen intellect or uh, average intellect. For a person of average intellect, two moments of phala, and uh, for the keen intellect, three moments of phala. At the time of the attainment of cessation, now we went through the cessation attainment uh, last night, the fourth immaterial javana runs twice. So, the fourth Arubha Vajra Jhana arises twice. And then context cessation, and then went into cessation. When emerging from cessation, either the fruition consciousness of non returning, Anagami Phala, or the fruition consciousness of Arahanship, Arahata Phala, arises. Accordingly, that means. If he is an anagami, then the anagami phala arises and so on for a single occasion. When it ceases, there is subsidence into the life continuum. So, these are the javanas that arise one time, two times, three times, four, five, six, and uh, seven times. In the cognitive process of attainment, that means attainment thought processes, as in the stream of the life continuum, like, like the Bhavanga, there is no fixed procedure regarding the processes. That means we cannot say how many times the, uh, the chaitas arise during the Samapati thought process. It should be understood that even many sublime and supramundane javanas take place in immediate succession. Now there are two kinds of uh, samapati processes, jhana samapati and phala samapati. So in any of these samapatis, the jhana consciousness or phala consciousness arises many, many times. So we must be familiar with 
which jivanas arise only once, which twice, which three times, four times, and so on. So here it is on the handout that they are all given, and so it is easy now to know this. So those that arise only once, what are they? Mahagata jhanas on first attainment or Rubhavachara and Arubhavachara jhanas on first attainment. And then number two, Abhinya jhanas, direct knowledge jhanas. And three, Magga Chaitas or path consciousnesses. And four, Anagami Pala and Arhata Pala Chaitas on emerging from Niroda Samabhati. So when uh, Anagamis and Arahams emerge from Niroda Samabhati, the first Chaita that arises in their mind is Anagami Pala or Arahata Pala for just one moment. So these are those that arise only once. And then those that arise two times. Fourth Aruba Vajrajana preceding Niroda Samabhadi. If you look at the Niroda Samabhadi chart, you will see that there are two moments of fourth Aruba Vajrajana before going into cessation. So those are the ones that arise two times. And those that arise two or three times, Palajavanas after Magas. So after path consciousness, fruition consciousness follows, sometimes two times and sometimes three times. And those that arise four times, reflecting Javanas at the time of Yamaka Pati Hariya. Yamaka means twin, Pati Hariya means miracle. So Yamaga Bhadi Hariya means twin miracle. So twin means water and fire for Buddhas. So for Buddhas, at the time of showing this miracle, the reflecting Javanas arise only four times, not seven times. And those that arise five times, reflecting Javanas at similar times for Savagas, for disciples. So for disciples, reflecting Javanas run for five times. And also, Kama Vajra Javanas at times of death, fainting, etc. So when the material base is weak, they run only for five times. And those that run for six or seven times, they are regular Kama Vajra Javanas. And those that run many times, Mahagata and Pala Javanas, that means Rupa Vajra Jhana, Arupa Vajra Jhana, and Fruition Consciousness during Samapati Vitis, during attainment thought processes. So during attainment thought processes, they run for billions of times. The next section deals with individuals and the types of consciousness they experience. First we must understand the individuals, how many individuals are there. So here on the handout you see Dukkati Ahituka. This is one kind of Puttujana. Now Puttujana means walled link. Buddhajana means those who are not enlightened yet. So unenlightened persons are called Puttujana. And there are different kinds of Puttujanas and this is one Puttujana called Dukkati Ahituka. Now Dukkati means woeful plain. Ahituka means their rebirth consciousness has no roots at all. So their rebirth consciousness is followed by no roots. So they are called Dukati Ahituka. Now Gati means uh, destination and Du means bad. So bad destination means the four woeful states, hell, animal kingdom, host of 
Asuras and the departed ones and the host of Asuras. So these four are called uh, four woeful states. Those who are born in those woeful states are called Dugati Ahituka, persons. And then the second is Sugati Ahituka. Again, it, he is a Putrojana. He is uh, one who is uh, not enlightened. Sugati means good, uh, good destination. That means the world of man, human beings, and a world of devas and brahmas. But here we take only uh, human beings. So these people also have the relinking or rebirth without any root, any hetu. And in the fifth chapter uh, you will again meet these people. Now the third one is Dvihetuka Putujana Worldlings that have two roots with their rebirth consciousness. Now here their rebirth consciousness is accompanied by two roots. These people are always Sugati people and so we do not call them Sugati Dvihetuka Putujana. We just call them Dvihetuka Putujana or even Dvihetuka. So these are the people, human beings and so on, who have no hope of attaining Javanas, who have no hope of attaining uh, Arahanship, who have no hope of attaining enlightenment. And then the next one is Tihetuka Putujana. He is still a Putujana, but he is called a Tihetuka. T means three and Hetu means root. So having three roots. Their rebirth consciousness is accompanied by three roots. And they are called Tihetuka Putujana. Now here we must use the word Putujana because Tihetuka persons can be Putujanas or the others like Sotapanas and so on. So up to now we have four kinds of Putujanas, four kinds of uh, wardlings. So the first one is Dukati Ahituka, the second Sugati Ahituka, and third Dvihetuka, and fourth Tihetuka Putujana. So there are four kinds of Putujanas. And the next is Sotapanna. Sotapanna is one who has reached the first st stage of enlightenment. Only a Tihetuka person can become a Sotapanna. So when we say a person is a Sotapanna, we, we don't have to say he is a Tihetuka person. Because Sotapanna implies that he is a Tihetuka person. So we don't call him Tihetuka Sotapanna. So uh, the words in the square brackets are just for your clarification, not to be used. And then the next one is Sakadagami, one who has reached the second stage of enlightenment. So he is called a Sakadagami. Sakat means once and Agami means coming. So he will come back to this life once. The next person is Anagami, one who does not come back to this life. He is also a Tihituka, who has reached the third stage of enlightenment. And then the last one is an Arahant. Arahant is a person who has reached the fourth stage of enlightenment and that is the highest stage of enlightenment. Only a Tihituka person can become an Arahant, and so when we say an Arahant, we don't have to say he is a Tihituka. So now we have four persons, Sotapanna, Sakadagami, Anagami, and Arahant.
at the bottom all magatha individuals that means who is at the moment of magga consciousness have only one cheda because a person at that moment has just that one cheda they are respective magga cheda now do you have the thought process for magga please look at that now up to g a person is a putta jana let's say uh, a person is practicing vipassana meditation and so when he is about to uh, get enlightenment this thought process arises in his mind and the four moments preceding g take the miscellaneous formations as object so that means they are vipassana moments and then there is g kotrabu and after g comes magga so at that moment a person is called a magga person a person who stands at magga so we take him as one person and then two phala moments or three phala moments follow and after the maga moment he becomes a phala person he can go on as a phala person until he reaches the next higher stage so maga person has only one moment only at that moment he is called a maga person immediately after that moment until he reaches the next higher stage he is called a phala person so first maga person first phala person second maga person second phala person and so on so a person who is at the moment of maga is also reckoned as one person actually there are no two person maga person and phala person one and the same person is called a maga person at one moment and phala person at other moments now you need to understand this because uh, when you say the attributes of the sangha yadi dan chattari purisa yugani atta purisa bugala huh? there are eight noble persons four pairs now eight noble persons mean maga person first stage maga person one first stage phala person two second stage maga person three second stage phala person four and so on so in that way we say there are eight noble persons eight ariya persons but in order to find a maga person what can we do <laughs> huh? we must go and look at a, a person who is practicing vipassana meditation <laughs> and we even don't know who, when he attains the enlightenment so that one moment very brief moment a billionth of a second at that moment he is a maga person so although we say there are eight noble persons in practice we have only four persons we can deal with we can communicate with only four persons actually at maga moment uh, we may not know uh, that person so there are eight individuals who are called noble persons and they are put two together and so they are four pairs that is why yadi dan chattari purisa yugani four pairs of men atta purisa bogla but eight individuals now you may not like saying that there are eight ariya persons four maga persons and four phala persons but i think if we take the example of a person who breaks a record i think we can relate it to that so a person who is breaking the record uh, when he is 
at the time of breaking the ribbon he is the one who is breaking the ribbon who is breaking the record and one second after that he is the one who has broken the record so we can get two persons here when he is breaking the ribbon he is the one who is breaking the, uh, the record and just one second after that and then and so on he is the one who has broken the record so and we can say there are two persons here the one who is breaking and the one who is broken we can say here also the one who is at the maga moment and the one who is at the phala moment so we have eight individuals we will go back to the twelve individuals so all together we get twelve individuals four putojanas and eight noble persons or eight areas since all maga persons have only one cheta we don't list them one by one here on this sheet now different ugglas or different individuals have different cheta's the cheta's they can experience now there are 89 or 121 cheta's that you know now duke the ahiduka persons cannot experience kriya jivanas because they cannot become enlightened in that life so animals and those who are born in hell and so on so they cannot experience kriya or functional jivanas and they cannot experience appana jivanas that means jnana and maga and phala and they cannot experience jnana sampayuta vipakas so jnana sampayuta means accompanied by knowledge vipaka the result and consciousness so they cannot experience result and consciousness accompanied by knowledge and also they cannot experience maha means kam kama vajra kama vajra result and which are not accompanied by knowledge so what they can experience a very few you can deduct uh, these types of consciousness from the 89 and then you will get the number but here only those that are not experienced by them are shown so you can find out what they experience also now sukati ahituka putojana now they are those human beings that are born blind deaf and so on so they cannot experience kriya jivanas because they cannot attain enlightenment or jhanas in in that life they cannot experience apana jivanas and they cannot experience resultant consciousness accompanied by knowledge but they can experience result and consciousness not accompanied by knowledge now dvihetuka now these people have two roots with their relinking consciousness or rebirth consciousness these people cannot experience kriya jivanas they cannot become arahants they cannot experience apana jivanas they cannot get jhanas in that life and jnana sampayuda vibhagas they cannot experience result and consciousness accompanied by knowledge and then the last of the putto janas tihe dukha buddho janas they can experience all they can experience kriya jivanas and lokutra jivanas and then sotapanas one who has attained the first stage of enlightenment he does not experience dittigata sampayuda jivanas jivanas accompanied by wrong view now when a person becomes sotapanna he eradicates wrong view and doubt so he will not experience the jivanas with wrong view and also he will not experience vitikicha 
he has eradicated doubt, doubt about the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, the practice and so on. And he will not experience Kiriya Javanas because he is still a Sotapanna, he has not become an Arahant. And he will not experience Maga Chaitas and three Upper Phala Chaitas. Sotapanna is one who has become a Sotapanna. So, as a Sotapanna, he cannot experience the Sotapati Maga Chita. He has already experienced it at the moment of Maga. Now he is after the Maga moment, and so Maga Chita does not arise again. So he does not experience either of the four Maga Chaitas. And he does not experience three Appa Palachetas. He experiences only Sotapati Palachetas. And then Sakadagami. Sakadagami is almost the same as Sotapana. He does not experience Dethikata Sambhuda Javanas and then Vichikecha Javanas, Kiriya Javanas, Maga Chaitas, and first, third, fourth Palachetas. He experienced second Phalachetas. And then Anagami, non-returner. Anagami does not experience Deitikata Sambhyodha Javanas. And then Dosa Mula Javanas. Anagami is one who has eradicated Dosa altogether. So when a person becomes an Anagami, he will not have two dosa mula chetas. He will, he will not have consciousness accompanied by dosa. He will never get angry. And fear is included in dosa. And so an anagami they will never be afraid of anything. Vichikecha Javana he does not experience. Actually it was eradicated uh, at the stage of Sotapanna. And Kiriya Javanas he does not experience because he has not yet become an Arahant. And then he does not experience Magachetas and first, second and fourth Palachetas. Because he is now an Anagami. So he does not experience Anagami Mega uh, consciousness again. And then Arahant. An Arahant does not experience Kusala Javanas. So Arahant is a person who does not get Kusala and also Akusala. And Arahant does not experience Magajetas and three lower Palachetas. So these are the consciousness that these persons do not experience. Now Arahant, when you become an Arahant, you will not get Kusala you will not get Akusala. So only when you are a non-Arahant can you get Kusala. So what an Arahant gets uh, when he pays homage to the Buddha, when he, he practices dana, His action is called just the action. Kiriya. Kiriya means doing, just happening. So whatever he does is just doing. It, it does not give any result. So when an Arahant pays homage to the Buddha, he does not get Kusala. We may say he gets Kiriya, or this uh, just the arising of the consciousness. So Arahants are described as those who have destroyed both Kusala and Akusala. They never do what is wrong and so they do not have akusala and they do what is good but they do not get kusala simply because they have eradicated the ignorance and craving that is the basis for accumulating karma so they do not acquire fresh karma after they become arahants but they still suffer or they still enjoy the fruits of their past karma. So after becoming an Arahant, after becoming a Buddha, they are not free from the results of their past karma. But they do not acquire any fresh karma 
and so there will be no rebirth for them in the future. So, the two roots, three roots and so on you will study in the fifth chapter. And then the last section is called analysis by way of planes. But you don't know the planes yet. <laughs> so it presupposes that you already know the 31 planes of existence. So let us just read the, the manual, page 181. In the sense sphere plane, all these foregoing cognitive processes occur according to circumstances. So in the sense sphere plane, in the human beings and in the six planes of devas and four woeful states, all the cognitive processes occur according to circumstances. So they can arise depending on different conditions. But all cognitive process consciousness can arise in the sense sphere plane. In the fine material sphere plane all occur with the exception of jhavanas connected with aversion that means dosa and registration moments. Registrations arise only in the Kama Vajra beings and not in Rupa Vajra beings. And it is said that Brahmas do not experience dosa, although they have not eradicated altogether. But once they are reborn as Brahmas, they do not experience dosa. But they may die from the Brahma wall and be reborn as human beings or devas. And when they are reborn as human beings and devas, they will have the dosa mula consciousness again. But so long as they are Brahmas in the Brahma world, they do not experience the consciousness accompanied by aversion or dosa. In the immaterial sphere plane, all occur with the further exception of the first path, fine material sphere consciousness, smiling consciousness, and the lower immaterial classes of consciousness. Now, immaterial sphere plane are those where beings have only chittas and chitisikas and no physical body. There are three kinds of beings. Beings that have five aggregates, beings that have four aggregates, and beings that have one aggregate. Beings that have five aggregates are like us human beings, animals, and, and devas, and also brahmas. Beings that have four aggregates are the immaterial brahmas. So immaterial brahmas have only chaitas and chaitasikas. Chaita is one aggregate and chaitasikas are three aggregates. And so only four mental aggregates exist in the immaterial world. And among the material Brahmas, there is one kind of Brahma which is called mindless Brahmas. So these Brahmas are without mind, without Chaita, without Chaitasika. So they are, they are born in that realm like statues. <laughs> so they must have fifth jhana here in the human life, and then they, they are those who hate mind. They think that it is because of mind that we suffer. If we have no mind, we will not suffer. So they practice dispassion towards mind. Say mind is bad, mind is bad, or something like that. So as a result of their practice, because they have powerful uh, fifth jhana, when they are reborn, they are reborn without mind. So mindless beings. It is said that if they die here lying down, they will be there lying down they like statues and they will, they will be there for 500 eons. So, so there are different kinds of uh, beings. So mostly 
beings are uh, beings have five aggregates, but there are beings that have only four aggregates, and also there are some uh, beings that have only one aggregate. So here in the immaterial sphere plane, those that have no physical body but only chitta and chitisika, only consciousness and mental factors, the first path cannot arise. Sota Bhadimaga cannot arise in the world of immaterial brahmas. So that means if you are reborn in the immaterial brahmas, brahma plane as a puttujana, you will not get Sota Bhadimaga there. You cannot get Sota Bhadimaga there. That is because in order for a person to attain Sota Pati Maga, he has to hear instructions from someone. He has to hear a discourse from the Buddha or from the teacher. If he does not hear anything from anybody, he will not become a Sota Panna. So, except for Buddhas and Pachika Buddhas, even Venerable Sariboda needs to hear from another person. Venerable Sariboda heard from whom? He was an ascetic before he joined the order, right? So one day he went out and he met a, a disciple of the Buddha. You know who was that disciple? His name was Asaji. Now, he was the youngest of the five disciples to whom Buddha gave his first sermon. So Sariboda asked him to teach him in brief and so the Asaji taught him saying ye dhamma he tupa bhava and so on. So hearing that the Venerable Sariboda became a Sotapanna. So even the Venerable Sariboda had to hear from another person to reach Sotapanna hood. But in the immaterial world, you have no ears. So since you have no ears, you cannot hear anything. And you cannot see anything because you have no eyes. So in order for a person to become enlightened or to become at least a Sotapanna, one has to hear from somebody else. And since there is... And no ear faculty in the brahmas of immaterial nature, Sotapati Maga cannot arise there. So that is why the immaterial sphere plane is described as inappropriate place. Inappropriate place to be born. Once you are born there, you will be there for 84,000 eons <laughs> and you cannot get enlightenment. You cannot hear the Buddha's teachings, you cannot see the Buddha and so on. So it is included in those places that are not conducive to enlightenment. So they are not good places to be born in, although they are very high places and you have to get the Arupa Vajrajanas to be reborn there. So in the immaterial sphere plane, there is no fast uh, maga. And then find material sphere consciousness. When you get to the upper plane, you lose the consciousness of the lower planes. So when you become an immaterial a Brahma, you cannot experience the material sphere consciousness. You cannot experience the Rupa Vajrajanas. And then smiling consciousness cannot arise in the Arupa Vajra Brahmas simply because they have no face, <laughs> although they cannot smile. So smiling consciousness cannot arise there. And the lower immaterial classes of consciousness, suppose there are four immaterial sphere planes, let us say first, second, third, fourth. So if you are in the lowest plane, then you may experience all four classes of immaterial consciousness. But if you are in the second plane, then you will not experience the first class of consciousness. If you are in the fourth plane, 
you will not experience the lower three uh, classes of consciousness. So, in the immaterial sphere planes, the lower immaterial classes of consciousness do not arise. So this is according to the plane. Now, there are 31 planes of existence taught in Abhidhamma and tomorrow I think we will go to that uh, in the fifth chapter. So, uh, there are 31 planes of existence. The lowest are the four woeful states uh, beginning with hell, animal kingdom, and then uh, pedas and asuras. And then above them there is the human world. And above them there are six diva worlds, six celestial worlds. And above them there are sixteen material Brahma worlds. One of them is uh, the world of mindless beings. And above them there are four immaterial worlds. So altogether you get 31 planes of existence. And as stated here, in the Kamavajra world, you can experience all cognitive process consciousness. But if you are reborn in fine material sphere or Rupavajra sphere, then you will not experience the jhanas connected with aversion and registration moments. And if you are reborn in the immaterial plane, then you will not experience first path, find material, sphere consciousness, and so on. So, on page 183, section 29, summary. In the sense sphere plane, according to circumstances, 80 kinds of process consciousness are found. Now, we must understand process consciousness and process free consciousness. There are 89 types of consciousness, but only 80 of them are process consciousness, and the other 9 are called process free consciousness. Process-free consciousness are those that have the function of uh, rebirth, bhavanga, and death. Because they arise outside the thought processes, they are called process-free consciousness. But here, the order is dealing with the process consciousness only. And so it is said here that 80 kinds of process consciousness are found. But actually, the other process freed consciousness uh, can be found in the Kama Vajra uh, sense via plane also. In the fine material plane, there are 64. So, in the fine material plane, there are only 64 types of consciousness uh, that they can experience. Now, in order to understand this, you, you have to understand that the Brahmas, the material plane beings, have no faculties of nose, tongue, and body. Now, they have what we call nose, tongue, and body, but they lack the sensitive material in those parts. That is why they cannot experience smell. They cannot experience taste. They cannot experience touch. So, Brahmas look like human beings, but although they have noses, they do not know the smell. You like to be that way? <laughs> so, they think that noses nonsense because through the nose you cannot get any spiritual development so they, they try to eliminate nose sensitivity they try to eliminate tongue sensitivity and they try to eliminate body sensitivity but they leave two 
the eyes and ears they live because with the eyes you can see the Buddha and with the ears you can hear his teachings so for seeing the Buddha and for listening to the teachings they leave them alone but the other three they said they have no good purpose so we will eliminate them and so they practice meditation and when they get jhana and they are reborn there then they are without these sensitive parts, sensitive particles in these places so although they have noses and tongues and bodies they do not have those sensations of smell, taste and touch so we have to subtract these types of consciousness from the 80 and so you can have only how many 64 process status if you cannot find out which are 64 you just read the guide <laughs> the 64 process status in the fine material plane are as follows 10 unwholesome excluding the two with aversion because the two with aversion are excluded by way of a plane not that they have eradicated but the plane is such that those who are born on that plane will not experience dosa and then nine rootless resultants excluding the pairs of nose tongue and body consciousness and then three rootless functionals and sixteen great wholesome and functionals plus ten fine material wholesome and functionals plus eight immaterial wholesome and functionals plus eight super mundane so there are altogether 64 process consciousness that Rupa Vajra Brahmas can experience so when you read this have that card with you and look at the card and try to see which are meant so let us try this now 10 unwholesome excluding the two aversion so that means these eight and then these two so these, these two are excluded so ten and then nine rootless resultants excluding the pairs of nose tongue and body consciousness so uh, this is nose con these are nose consciousness this tongue and this body so we must exclude these nine rootless resultants so root, rootless these, these three are rootless right and re, the, these two are resultants so how many do we get one two three four five six seven eight nine so nine uh, rootless resultants excluding the pairs of nose uh, nose body and tongue and then three rootless functionals these three and then 16 great wholesome and functionals great means kama vajra wholesome means this functional means this 16 great wholesome and functionals plus 10 fine material wholesome and functionals now this is material wholesome and this is material functional 8 immaterial wholesome and functionals now, these are 4 immaterial wholesome these are 4 immaterial functionals and then 8 super mundane now we can take these as 40 or just as 8 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so whenever you read this try to have that card with you and see whether you can identify them on the chart so we come to the conclusion now does the cognitive process connected with the six doors according to circumstances continues on uninterrupted as long as life lasts so as long as life, life lasts these thought processes arise one after another 
interrupted by movements of bhavanga. So all through our lives, uh, there are one thought process, and then the movements of bhavanga, another thought process, movements of bhavanga, another thought process, and so on and so on, all through our lives. Even when we are asleep, the mental activity is going on. Interrupted by the life continuum. Yeah, only uh, they are interrupted by bhavangas. As long as life lasts, what about next life? As long as we are in this samsara, there is always the mental activity or chaitas and chaitisikas going on and on and on. So we are never without the chaita or chaitisika at any moment in this life or in the lives to come. So this chaita, one chaita following another in the order given is called the lawful order of chaitas or chaita niyama. Because of this chaita niyama, the different chaitas arise and disappear like the adverting to the object arises and it disappears and it is followed by seeing and then it is followed by receiving and investigating and so on. So they arise and disappear according to their nature and there is no one who gives order to them like you be receiving, you be investigating, you be determining and so on. But they just arise and disappear following this law of the order of consciousness. So at every uh, moment we see just the arising and disappearing of consciousness and mental factors and also of the material properties. Always the mind and matter arising and disappearing goes on and on and on until we reach Nibbana, until we die as Arahans. So when we become Arahans, we do not acquire a fresh karma, and so that is the end of our samsara. So when we become Arahans or Buddhas, then there will be the end of samsara. That is at the end of that, that life. So until that time, we will be going on and on and on, experiencing different types of consciousness, mental factors, and also having and different material properties in our body. So this is the chapter on VTs or cognitive series. So we take the consciousness as, as in groups, as in a series. But as I said before, at one given moment there is only one type of consciousness. Not that 17 thought moments existing uh, right now. So although we try to see them as a series, as a VT, as a process, actually at a given moment there is only one type of consciousness. And one type of consciousness arises and it disappears to give place to the next one to arise. Okay, there are some questions here. How is it possible for any one of the 12 Akusala Chaitas to take 81 Chaita Mundane and the beautiful Sobhana Kama Vajra Chaita as object? Although they are Akusala, they can take the other Chaitas as object. You may be uh, attached to the Kusala you do, uh, you may be attached to even the jhana you attain, and so although they are akusala, they can take the other types of consciousness and also material things as object. Actually, 12 akusalas can take anything that belongs to mundane world, mundane chaitas, mundane chaitasikas, and rupa. Now, next one, does wholesome consciousness accompanied by joy which give rise to jhanas arise at the parikama, upachara, anuloma, and kotrabhu stage. In fact, 
the the parikama ubhachara anuloma and gudrabhu are the wholesome consciousness. The kama vajara, uh, wholesome consciousness accompanied by uh, jnana or knowledge. Just the same kind of jita occur in all the four stages. The same type of consciousness arises, but at different moments it gets different names. So let us say the first jita accompanied by knowledge arises as parikama, and then it arises as ubhijara, it arises as anuloma, and it arises as kotrabhu. When is a maga arise? Is it only during sitting meditation or even in our daily activities? Satipatthana observe every action from moment to moment. Can it arise? Venerable Ananda became an arahant while he was going to lie down on the couch. Right? So the maga or enlightened man can come at any moment of practice, not any moment while you are not doing anything. <laughs> so that is why uh, at the retreat you are made to practice mindfulness always. And one mindfulness moment to be followed by another moment of mindfulness because enlightenment can come at any moment. So to the Venerable Ananda it came when he was going to lie down on the couch. So it is said that he became an arahant well, when he was out of the four postures. He was not standing, not sitting, not lying down, and not walking when he became an arahant. For a person who has attained arahantship, does that mean that he dwells in pala consciousness indefinitely? No. To get into pala consciousness is like taking a vacation. So you do not take vacation always, you just take it at some times. So when an Arahan wants to take vacation from Dukkha in this world, he would go into the Pala consciousness attainment, only for some time. Or does the fruition attainment thought process continue into Bhavanga again after a period of time? Yes, the fruition attainment thought process stops when it reached the time uh, he has specified before he entered into the attainment. So before entering into attainment, he, he made a resolution, may I be in this attainment for one hour, two hours, or one day. And then he will be in the attainment uh, for as long as he made the, the resolution. And at the end of that period, automatically his the attainment thought process will subside into bhavangas. If the fruition attainment thought process terminates into bhavanga again, does that mean that once his fruition attainment thought process ends and bhavanga continues, he is not enlightened? <laughs> no. <laughs> bhavanga is the like buffer uh, thought moments. But the arising of Bhavanga does not mean that he is not enlightened. You know, even the Buddha had moment of Bhavanga. How do you control the length of time you dwell in jhana? So you make a resolution before you enter into the jhana attainment. Is it true that you cannot decide how long you want to be in jhana once you are in it? You make a resolution before you enter into jhana. Otherwise, you can be <laughs> in the jhana for any length of time, but there is a limitation to your physical body. So, I think seven days is the maximum for human beings. How can I know whether a person is enlightened? <laughs> so that I may learn from his experience. Is there a way to tell to what level of enlighten, enlightenment a person has reached? For example, a unit of measure for the path <laughs> to the different types of consciousness. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> there is no such. If a person 
claims to be an anagami, then we can test him. <laughs> we can make him angry, and if he doesn't get angry, then he is an anagami. We can say like that. Yes, there are stories like that mentioned in the commentaries. A monk is reported to be an arahant. Then another monk wanted to test him. So one day when that monk was bathing in the river, the other monk told another young monk to dive into the water and then uh, take hold of his uh, feet uh, abruptly. So that the monk uh, dived into the water and took hold of his feet and then he shouted he was afraid. Uh, he thought it was a crocodile or something. So people knew that he was not an Arahant. <laughs> something like that. And also there was another monk who reputed to be an Arahant. And so the king brought him to his uh, palace and then he had the like juice prepared uh, before him. Now when you see sour fruit right, uh, like orange or lime uh, prepared and you see that uh, they're preparing yourself and your mouth watered. So <laughs> the mouth of that monk watered and so the king knew that he was not an arahant. That's something like that. So there are ways and means to test, but whether we are willing to do the test or not is <laughs> difficult to say. Is the object for Gotrabu always Nibbana? Yes. If yes, then how can the Kama Vajra Cheta take Nibbana as object? Now, there are some Kama Vajra Chetas, they can take Nibbana as object. Now, the Manodara Vajra is one of them, but not at other times, only when they arise as Gotrabu here, and also only they arise as the mind or adverting in a thought process that takes Nibbana as object. So Kamavachana Chaitas can take Nibbana as object also. Under the beautiful factor Sobhana Chaitas because there are three abstinences, Viriti, namely right speech, right action and right livelihood. Why is there no abstinence with regard to my, the right thought? The abstinences belong to Sila. Now Sila, moral, moral purity. And sila means abstention from something. But right thought is not abstention from wrongdoings, but it is the thought about getting out of this samsara, the thought about renouncing the world, thought about practicing meditation and so on, and also thoughts of loving kindness and compassion. But those three belong to the stage of Sila, and so they are described as abstinences. Now, the right speech, although we call it right speech, actually it is abstention from wrong speech. And also right action means abstention from wrong action, and right livelihood means abstention from wrong livelihood. In the Kusala Vibhaga Ahituka Cheta, there is investigating consciousness accompanied by joy and equanimity. In the Akusala Vibhagacheta, there is investigating consciousness accompanied by equanimity. Why is there no investigating consciousness accompanied by pain for very undesirable object? Now, we do not have very undesirable object. Undesirable object is just one, but desirable object is divided into ordinarily desirable and very desirable. So when the object is very desirable, the investigation is accompanied by joy. And if it is just desirable, ordinarily desirable, it is accompanied by equanimity. So we do not have very undesirable object. When we say the Buddha Dhamma is well proclaimed, there are ten Dhammas, four Magas, four Pala, Nibbana and Pariyati. Please comment. <laughs> what do you want me to comment? <laughs> so when we say Dhamma, now we, sometimes we mean ten things, the four Magas, four Palas, Nibbana, and Pariyati means the teachings. 
But sometimes we mean only the maga. Sometimes we, we mean only the nine ones, uh, in, uh, excluding uh, the pariyati. So, whenever we meet the word dhamma, we must know what this dhamma represents. Sometimes it may mean only maga. Sometimes it may mean all ten or nine and so on. And they are said to be well proclaimed because now when you look at a discourse you will see that there is an introduction or something like that in the beginning and then there is the body of the teaching and then there is the conclusion. So in modern times we call them well written. So it is called well proclaimed. And the other kind of uh, being well proclaimed is that it is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end. Good in the beginning means in one sense. It can give you joy, peacefulness, just when you listen to it, you listen to the Dhamma. That is what is good in the beginning. Just you listen to the Dhamma and you feel peaceful. So that is the goodness in the beginning. And when you practice it, you get results. You will even become enlightened. So that is the good in the middle. And after you practice it and you become an Arahant, you can enjoy the bliss of emancipation. So that is the good in the end. So in this way, the Dhamma is described as well proclaimed. So good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end. So good in the beginning means just by listening to it, you can get results. And good in the middle means by practicing it, you get the results. And good in the end means after practicing also, you get the results.